Hi, this is Hosmi Valdez Rodriguez from Making Us Easy, and today we're going to talk about the equations of lines and, well, figures. So, well, lines, planes, and figures. So, let's just take a look at what I mean. So, for example, we have here, here we have uh, a point. So, we have a certain point in space, in points in three-dimensional space described by three coordinates, three, two, and one. Now, imagine two planes, plane alpha and plane beta. we got to complete these two examples. Determine the equation of the plane that passes through point zero and is perpendicular to both, plane, both planes A and B. Determine the equation of the line that passes through P naught and is parallel to both planes. Now, we're going to do this very same example, except different coordinates and different planes here. So what we're going to do to start off is rather simple. It's going to be given point negative 3, 4, and 0, plane alpha, 2x plus y minus z minus 1 equals 0, and plane beta, x plus 3y minus 2z plus 2 is 0. Complete the following exercises. First, we've got to determine the equation of the plane that passes through point P0 and is perpendicular to both planes, alpha and beta. So it's kind of simple what you're going to see here. So let's just think of it. So we previously looked at vectors. So this, everything after, before this, up to, he, up to here, to here, these are all vector formulas. Actually, no, up to here. These are all vector formulas. Now, these last few formulas are going to be about the equations of lines, planes, and figures, where we feature vectors, but they're not the main points anymore. So, for example, let's say that we have... Okay, to find pass-through p naught, we've got to look... For the, for the first one, we've got to look at... That formula right there. That formula states that given a vector known as the normal vector, then you literally just need to find this formula given that it passes through this point. So we have most of that information, but except we're given planes, not vectors. We don't have any vectors for perpendicularity. So really, we're missing A, B, and C. But we don't care because we can figure uh, which we can figure the numbers relative to each other and assume one of them as being one, and then changing the others accordingly. That's this is what I mean. Pretend that we substitute x for a, y for b, and z for c. And by the way, the negative is still going to be a negative there, and we ignore this value d. We and we ignore this value over here d. We ignore that one. So we'll ignore the negative one for now. So what we'll do is we'll first take, and yes, we're gonna do a simultaneous equation here. So we're gonna do this for both. So we get two and then the x becomes a, plus the y becomes b, minus, and then the z becomes a c, is equal to zero. Now, this is, trivial at this point, but what we can do is the same on the other to get our second equation. x becomes a, y becomes, oh, it's 3, and then b minus 2c is equal to 0. Again, ignore the 2 and the negative 1 from that for now. Now what we got to do is figure out some way to figure out one variable and then find the others equivalently. We're going to start, we're going to try finding uh, the value of these two of A and C relative to B. We're going to do that. So, how do we do that? Well, it's simple by doing the easy simultaneous equation stuff. By, for example, let's say we're going to find uh, the value of C relative to B. What that means is that we're gonna, how many B's does it make to get C? Or in other words, N times, so N times B equals C, what is N? That's what we're figuring out. So to do this, this is rather uh, simple. First, we gotta find, we gotta cancel out the a's. Now I'm gonna do this such that b ends 
up being a positive number. There are many other ways you can do this, but I'm going to pick one that gets B to a positive number and also cancels out the A's. And it's more simple. So in this case, that would be multiplying this equation by 2 and subtracting and then subtracting this one. So that would mean we have, uh, we have negative 2A minus B plus C plus 2A plus 6B minus 4C. So that's going to end up with 5B minus 3C. And the 2As cancel. Also, the zeros, will never, the zeros will not change. So this is equal to 0, which means we can pass this on to the other side by adding 3Z, C, to both. 5B is equal to 3C. Thus, 5 thirds B is equal to C. Got that. Now we're going to do the same except with finding the value of A relative to B. So if M times B equals A, what is M? So we're kind of asking the same question. It's just a different number and a different letter that we're figuring out for. To find M, what multiple M of B is A, we, we do the same except we cancel out the C's. So this time, again, I'm going to pick one which leaves B as a positive. So we have to multiply this one by 2 no matter what. But which one do we multiply by a negative? Well, in this case, we're going to multiply this one by a negative to ensure the B will end up as a positive. We're making B positive just for an art because we just want to. It doesn't matter if B is positive or negative since really when you subtract 2 minus 3 is negative 1 and 3 minus 2 is 1. So all it's going to do is change the signs. But overall, the total signs relative to each other will be the same. So it won't matter whether it's positive or negative. So it doesn't matter whether we want B to be positive or negative. It doesn't matter. We're still going to get the right answer as long as we get to cancel the C's. So this leaves us with 4A minus 2B plus 2C. In fact, let's just ignore the C's because we know they're going to cancel out because we want to do that. So versus A plus 3B. So this is going to be negative 3A plus B equals 0. We add 3A. We add 3a to both sides, and 1 thirds b is equal to a. And we can actually say that this means c is bigger than b is bigger, is bigger than a. We can actually say that given these information, given this information. But that's not, we don't want, we don't need to know whether c is bigger than b is bigger than a or the other way around or vice versa, whatever it is. We don't want to know the inequalities relative to each other. We want to know the equation, the legitimate equation. So to figure this out, we have to use some notation. So if we think of it, we have, so we're going to use uh, this formula now. So we're going to just start by doing a x minus, minus negative 3, which is x naught in this case. So x plus 3 plus b times x minus 4. I mean y minus 4, which is our y naught. And then since z naught is 0, then it's just going to be c0. Okay, so we figured this out relative to b. So we're going to assume we know b is 1 to figure out the legitimate value. Also, we're letting b be 1 because it doesn't matter what we do. It's always going to be the same uh, fraction of c and a. It's always going to be the same fraction. So we can say that no matter what we say b is, we can always cancel it down to the, po to the point where b is 1. That's the most we can cancel it down to. At this point, we get, um, well, 1 third times x plus 1 plus y minus 4 uh, plus 5 thirds c. So, equals 0. Now, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And we can add 3 to cancel these two out and add 3 on this side, which gives us uh, let me, 1 third x plus y plus 5 third c equals 3. But now we can multiply this entire thing by 3, and that leaves us with x plus 3y plus 5z. I forgot to write this is a c, it's a z. Right. Plus 5z is equal to 9, 9, because 3 times, so now we've got that. Now, 
this one now, we're gonna solve this one in much more, in much, we're gonna solve this one in much less time than this one because some of the information we got here has to be used here. And since we've already found that information in advance, we can be sure to know what this answer is gonna be in less time than we know the answer to this one because we already know the information we need. So let's recap, 5 thirds B is equal to C, 1 third B is equal to A. This time we're gonna use a different formula, this one, where P naught is this negative three, four, zero point, and A, B, and C are the values that are relative to each other in this very same way. So how are we gonna do this? Well, it's easy. So we're gonna start, again, we're gonna assume B is one. So we're, we're gonna quickly write down the formula. So we have x minus negative three, ba basically x plus three over a is equal to y minus four over b. So this is a, a, a different version of this formula right here, equals z over c, right? So now, and there's no equal to zero in this case, because this is a line. See, of the line that passes through P and is parallel to both planes A and B. So what we're gonna do now, this is gonna be easy, is to, again, assume B is one and plug in the relative values. So X plus three is equal to one third B, or one third, is equal to Y minus four over nothing, by definition, because it's over one, and we don't need to show one when the numerator is. Well, the denominator is one, we just say, because again, fractions are the same as dividing. Now, we're going to equal that to z over 5 thirds. Now, this is messy and complicated and inefficient, but, but we can solve this. We can multiply each of the denominators by three, or analogously, divide each one by three, giving us x plus three is equal to y minus four over three, is equal to z over five. And that gets us these two equations. Based on this information, we can figure out these equations without knowing the values of a or b from a simultaneous equation and two wonderful formulas.